Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a somber edition of the On My Block podcast. Friday edition. Losers edition. I'm your host, Mike Wall. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying, please subscribe and review on our Process to Perform YouTube channel. And check this uh, audio podcast out anywhere you get your, your podcast on the Believe Network. Hit me up, Mike Wall 60 on uh, Twitter, Process to Perform, and Instagram. And as always, our show is sponsored by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is your number one source for your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, esports, football, and more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get into the action. Remember to use our code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. Now... This game was, I mean, what do you say? We got absolutely manhandled, right? I mean, really, when you when you just when you put everything out, Packers got absolutely manhandled, 34-20. The game wasn't even that close. For the second out of three weeks, the Packers gave up 211 yards on the ground. 43 rushes, 211 yards, 4.9 yards per carry, three touchdowns. Dave Montgomery comes back off of a, a miss last week. 32 rushes for 121 yards. Khalif Raymond's got a 40-yard end around. Goff got into the action. Jamar Gibbs got his eight for 40 for five yards uh, a carry. Just absolutely. When you watch this tape, here's the thing. You know, people ask me, are they getting? Is it Joe Bear? Are you getting beat by scheme? Are you getting? It's. It is. First of all, the the Lions. Taylor Decker played. So he plays left tackle. Peninsula goes back to right tackle. That's a big deal. Now they're not with their third string guy, the guy that we were hoping that would play against Rashawn Gary. Now they got two good players, two first round draft picks playing against our guy. You know, some of the best guys we got, including Rashawn Gary, who for me is the best player we have on defense. They were absolutely dominant, and it's not just or not only that Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator, good friend of mine. The Detroit Lions completely out coached, out maneuver Joe Barry. Completely. It's that we lost so many 1v1 matchups. We lost so many scheme matchups or tactic matchups. We're not pressing the hole when we need to. We're not filling where we need to. We're going for filling the wrong hole. Pause. Anyways, our special teams. Versace comes in last year. They're bottom, they're bottom feeders. Keyshawn Nixon comes in. We're in like top 20, top 17. Fumbling punts yesterday. Can't get the ball off the 25-yard line. Missed assignments. Uh, uh, um, you know, it, it just keeps going. We, we didn't have a first down on offense until 7.51 remaining in the second quarter. It was on a penalty. And so you start going like, what, what the hell happened? What exactly is going on? And I just go back to... Monday, Tuesday, we do a keys to victory and just did they did we get it done? Our three's key our three keys to victory on this show. We're going into this game. Number one, win first down on defense, take away their under center play action pass game, their pistol play action pass game. Nope. They're getting whatever they want. First down, second down, they're getting all the looks they want. Goss planting on his back foot, stepping to his throws. He can throw it deep, he can throw it mid-range, he can throw it short. Got him off the spot a couple times. Rashawn Gary played hard. But first of all, you're, if you're winning the run game, you're winning first down. And if that quarterback, if he squares his feet up, he throws high. If he gets downhill, kid can throw the ball. I mean, Goff is really good at throwing the ball. He's a top, what do we call it, five, seven quarterback right now in the National Football League. With Ben Johnson running that, that uh, coordinator game, that offensive line healthy, healthy enough. Really, really good. Skill position players everywhere. We talked about it. They're just talented. So we don't do that. They absolutely maul us for over 200 yards on the ground again. Number two, have answers for the defensive run slash or the, the blitz slash stunt game in Detroit. So in other words, when they move, when they move their guys, do we have an answer for it? Are we blocking backside? Are we hinging on a backside power? The Packers went 12 for 27, 12 rushes, 27 yards, 
two th- two point three yards per carry, five carries each for each running back. Five carries each for each running back. So I guess the answer is no, but you don't really even know because you start the game out with six passes in a row, and we want to establish the run. Lafleur is angry after the game. Listen, coaching is hard. He gets mad at the, the, the media after the game and talks about, well, if you can't establish a run on offense or defense, you can't stop the run on defense, you can't establish a run on offense, it's going to be tough to win this league. You didn't even try to run the ball. You didn't even try to run the ball. And then, and then you're running play action pass stuff, under center play action pass down at the goal line, and it's like you're down 17 points. Like, what do you think? It, it's, it's a, it was a really, really, it was a the whole night was a head scratcher from, you know, short week, your game plan to, to how they showed up to who's playing physical, who's playing with their hair on fire. Like what team embodies the demeanor of their coach, or maybe they both do, but what coach do you want to have their players embody in a game like that on Thursday night is maybe the more, you know, uh, pointed question. And then the third thing is, Detroit averages, you know, we talked about this. It's kind of an even offensively matched game on paper. Obviously, I think Detroit is gets the nod because we gave we got 38 points against uh, Chicago. But how do the Bear, or how do the Packers kind of win the turnover battle in order to win the points battle? Like in other words, where do we generate more points from? Special teams? Nope. We did get 3 early. Goff had 3 on that we got 3 on the turnover. We went 3 and out, but we did we were in a position to get Excuse me about the camera, guys. We were in a position to get the uh, the field goal. So we're up 3 nothing in that category. But then we turn the ball over. They get a touchdown off it. I think they got a touchdown off the second one. So they at least got 10, if not 14. So we lose that battle. So the keys to victory are gone. So that would have been the good. Here's the bad. Like I said, lost the turnover battle 1-2. to two. We don't make a single adjustment in the first half to protect Jordan Love. Everyone's uh, throw it quick, throw it long, throw it off the spike, blah, 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 blah. Nothing. Kids back there looking at a second, third read all first half. Throw it off his back foot all first half. And then the defense is just literally in take your medicine mode. I don't know what else to call it. Those kids are playing hard. The defense, I'll talk about this a little bit later. The players on defense are, like in other words, I would go to war with those guys. They're, they've got some dudes on that defense. They've got some tough guys on that defense. It's not that they don't want to play hard. It's not that they're not tough guys. But, man, there is a dysfunction in that room right now that you just – it is tough to watch. Here's the ugly. Because you got a lot of football coming up. We're averaging 3.3 yards per carry. We've got three touchdowns on the on the ground total for the first four games of the season. Jordan Love has two of them, two out of the three. Quay Walker is good, leaving the team, leading the team with 47 tackles. Bad. He has two tackles for loss. And I'll show a couple on here. If you do not attack the whole, we, we showed the Falcons, we showed the Saints, we showed the Lions. The linebackers play downhill and fill gaps and, and, and blow up plays. If you are going to continue to catch at the second level, you're going to give up five yards of carry. We do not play on their side of the line of scrimmage. We have guys that individually, Enigbari beat a tight end, got a tackle on the line of scrimmage. He played on their side of the line of scrimmage. We win. Rashawn Gary, can, Preston Smith, they can individually play on their side of the line of scrimmage if they're, if they're not double teamed. But if you're not going to have your linebackers come downhill, you better hope that your safety never misses because – it's just too easy to run in the National Football League the way they got it set up. And then the, the last thing, they only had four last night, but they come in in opportune times, and the penalties are just killing the Packers. We have 31 penalties for over 240 yards now. We're like dead last in the National Football League. Obviously, I think somebody will pass us. I think the Panthers will probably pass us going into week four when everything's said and done. But we were number two in the league going in last night. We had four more. Let's watch some tape. There's some good. First drive. Got the quarterback throwing off his back foot. 
He's kind of squaring up his feet, throws it high, and we get a free one. Okay, Rudy Ford does a good job. I don't know he's calling out here. I, I, I do have to say this. I didn't notice this before, but is that Goff he could have hit right here? It is. What in the hell are you doing? He could have hit Goff right here. Look at this. Goff is the last guy. You're choosing to go out here. You could have hit the quarterback with the ball, and you went out of bounds? I'll tell you what. Of all the things, I didn't even notice this. Of all the things I saw on this tape, if I was a teammate of this, I'd be the most upset about this right here. You got to be kidding me. So they did a good job here. Talking about the Packers. Ford's just reading eyes, right? He should he should hit this out route, but he sees Goff looking down the middle of the field. They got two crossers coming in with it with a clear out on the top. That's called the uh, for the love of the game route. You just run a you run a nine down the middle and occupy the safety so you can get the guy underneath. Rudy Ford does a great job of, of reading eyes here instead of taking that out route. Isn't supposed to be there. Good play. Okay. So we get this. Look at that. Matt, after the game, Coach LaFour says, we can't, you know, if we can't effectively run the ball or stop the run, we're going to lose. Can't effectively run the ball. Let's just watch the first three, the first series. You're down on the, you know, on the 16. He's on his second read, gets flushed. One pass. Play number two. Empty. Pass number two. On his second read, bouncing around. Why is he getting, like, what is the problem? Because it's not like he didn't have time to throw last night. People are going to say he was running for his life. No, he wasn't. He's got a pocket. Hit the back foot. Throw the ball. Look around at the bottom of the screen on the 10-yard line. Every single person is covered. Why? Because they're not running level plays. They're not running plays on multiple levels right now. Okay? They'll do it in the second half, but they don't run plays. on. In other words, they don't have an underneath crosser or a deep crosser. All these guys are at the exact same spot. The Lions are satisfied that they can get home with four because we got a couple backups in the game. So they're going to rush four, drop seven. Easy money. So now we got sack. Third play, empty. Dink and dunk. Get our field goal. They're in 21 personnel. We go nickel. That's a decision you have to make. Sam Laporta, Laporta killed us last night. He's a great talent. My favorite tight end coming into the draft. I like Musgrave. I love Laporta. Just Iowa deal. Okay. But Kenny Clark gets hooked. Our best interior defensive lineman gets hooked by Graham Glasgow, a backup right guard. Joe Barry can't do anything about this. Okay? He gets hooked by a backup right guard. So they get a seven-yard run, eight-yard run, ten-yard run, excuse me. Just not characteristic, right? Now, TJ Slayton, not getting hooked. Winning at the line of scrimmage, great play. That's how you play the game. You force them to go lateral. You press, you extend, you read, you, you separate, you make tackles. Got to be the instigator every down, every single down. So we're in man defense. A lot of people, you know, so the Packers lead the league in, in playing zone. Okay, well, we're going to go man. Well, what's the problem if we go man? Well, got Rasul Douglas on Laporta, rookie. And honestly, Jared Goff, like, this isn't Rasul Douglas's fault. Maybe he can do a better job or not. I don't know. Laporta's a super athlete. And Goff throws darts, man. Like, if you're letting him step into his into the uh, throw, he's throwing darts. Now, do you have to give up yards per carry after the catch? Could you just make the tackle and not give him an extra 25 yards? That would be nice. Plus, that could have been a horse collar right there. But you look here. Look, he's square. 
He's not going to square up his body. His feet are going downhill. He's going to step into this throw. You look at the space occupied around the 50-yard line on the left hash. I mean, this is all you can eat. There is nothing that Rasul Douglas can really do. Now, do you want do you want your, your safety to drive on this? Yeah, but you already have Savage down driving on the other side. Savage isn't doing anything, right? So is this a coverage scheme? Or are they just going man with a robber? If they're playing robber, who's he robbing? I don't get it. It's tough. I mean, this is why they scheme. This is why they stay up late at night because this kind of stuff is, you know, it, it, it's it's tough to unravel. We're still, you know, almost back to back plays here. Stips on he. This is a stick nod, right? Stutter go, whatever you want to call it. Slips game. Seven three. Yeah. You know? So it's seven three. We went three and out after the game. We can't effectively run the ball. And I'm not saying I've been in games where they pass the ball a bunch and then we go, well, if you would have ran it, you would have ran it. Like we couldn't run. We can't run. I mean, we have 3.3 yards of carry. The mentality of what you're trying to accomplish, though, I think means something. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying like he, I, I understand he did, he did six, you know, six passes in a row. So we go pistol, pass again. A guy who you never think is going to get a sack. I didn't even know this guy's name. Isaiah Bugs from San Francisco. Well, he was well coached last year. I know that much. They got a hell of a good line coach in, in San Francisco. Okay. So he splits Myers and, and, and John Running Jr. So now we're backed up again. They're out of pistol. Try to go quick. Try to run the quick game. They're satisfied. They zone dropped the defensive end. So now all of a sudden what we thought was a wide open throw from Jordan Love. He's got to see that defensive end. He's got to thread it a little bit tighter. He can't lead him. So nice adjustment by Detroit. Aaron, uh, then we go shotgun again. He's holding the ball. They're getting there. Kaminsky can – like you put a defense – a long def, a long arm defensive end against our guards, they're going to struggle. Just is what it is. Like, it, and then just say, "Hey, he's got to hold the ball for three seconds." Four, it, they're going to struggle. So three and out. Look up top here, Nick Vari. This is is that in, this is the stuff that you again is just kind of tough, because last week we saw Preston Smith box in, play box technique, and absolutely smash the Saints defender on their line, the side of the line of scrimmage. Okay. Now he tries to box and he gets he gets wheeled on. He's not playing wrong shoulder. He's boxing this guy. And again, Graham Glasgow, the backup right guard, wheels on him. This sorry, this is Hollins. Wheels on him and lets these guys get another seven yard gain. I don't so I th- Someone's coaching it's somewhere along the line. They're 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 learning to think that that's okay. That's not okay. You shouldn't get wheeled right there. If you were wrong shouldering that play from where he is, then you have a problem philosophically with scheme they're running, but you go, okay, with well, a wrong shoulder and he's gonna get logged. That's how it works. But if you're playing box technique, meaning I just have my shoulder square to you, I'm gonna go helmet to helmet. You can't wheel me. That's not how this it's just not how it works. It doesn't make any sense. You got Rasul down here. So what happens is, uh, the reason I point this out is, so Savage is trying to jump her out again, okay? So they're bringing him down, essentially playing like a robber here. Is this robber or lurk? It's robber. So Rasul is on outside leverage. Like, why is that important? Because as soon as Darnell Savage jumps the stick route on 14, on um, Amara St. Brown, there's nobody in the middle. A lot of times when you go three by two, you'll pull the safety from the other side to come down because there's going to be a crosser and jump the crosser. For some reason, two times in a row, the Green Bay Packers are taking that three-man side and they're bringing the the, the safety down on that side, which is, I mean, people do it. It's I, haven't, I, I usually see them come from the other side, but you can see why you come from the other side because you're going to run into this cross, right? Otherwise, they're, they're wide open. 
Now, again, th this is the stuff that – so there's a scheme, a scheme thing, or maybe that's the decision that Darnell Savage made on his own. I, I doubt it, but maybe he did. Maybe he had a choice – which guy is going to take? He took the wrong guy. Maybe you should take the higher crosser to stay. I, I don't know. But when you let the guy get back up here and not tackle him on the ground, and even if he gets another yard or two, you just go, well, why did we do that? Why don't we just, yeah, why don't we just tackle him when he's down the first time? Both linebackers. Now, when you're running a gap scheme, the Green Bay Packers is, hopefully most people know here, we used to run this, you know, 16, 17 times a game some form of gap scheme, counter, stutter, uh, power, et cetera. The linebackers have to do some sort of fill and spill. So somebody's got to fill hard and somebody's got to come over the top or they're going to run lanes outside and inside. But it can't be shuffle, 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 read over the entire play. And this is one of the things we talk about, particularly with Seven. As talented as he is, you got to be a hammer sometimes. Like you can't always be a – you know, you can't be a catcher's mitt, Okay. Got to come downhill and do something here because look how easy this is. They got a guard pulling up for Isaiah McDuffie. They got him taken care of. But if Quay doesn't get over the top, then you got a free five yards right here every time. It's just – it's 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 literally – it's like you're going to the King's Buffet, you pay your $5.99, and you know it ain't going to be very good, but it's all you can eat. That's all they're doing right here. This is all you can eat unless you got that linebacker coming over the top. Downhill, great jobs. This is what I'm talking about. So Enabari does a good job. He's just, hey, up against a rookie. You win your 1v1 matchup every once in a while, and you make a play on the ball. All right? So you got those individuals that are working hard. These guys have talent. But there's some key things at key positions that just aren't happening, and you got to figure out why. This I can't believe. Jared Goff, one of the all-time, one of my favorite quotes of, of the year so far is, is, I guess Fitzpatrick, Ryan Fitzpatrick is on the prime thing, calling him like a poor man's Matt Ryan. He said something bad about him. And Goff comes up after the, <laughs> after the game and says, well, I hope my game was up to your standards. As if like Fitzpatrick is like, you know, a, a 12 time, is Tom Brady or something like that. So Goff, good for him. Hey, when you're playing like this, you can say whatever you want. I love that he takes on our guys, by the way. And I guess we punish him a little bit, but you know, he was surprised when the quarterback puts his puts his hat in front of uh, hat in front of his shoulder pads and lets it rip. Man, that was kind of awesome. So you watch this play here. We make a good make a good fill, so nobody gets up to Quay because they're running a wham play. So the tight end comes in, whams the backside D tackle, and they can't get up to Quay. So good job filling the hole, man. Great job filling the hole. No gain. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Next play. I'll show from the end zone. You, you have all your gaps covered. So in every defense, gaps are accounted for. So when a defensive coordinator is drawing up their defenses, the gaps, so the, the center and guard gap is the A gap, Garden tackles a B gap, tackle tight ends a C gap, et cetera. Okay. Every gap is accounted for. Right now, because of the split of Laporta and the way that they want the defensive end to play, that is a huge gap in between their three technique. And I think that's Preston Smith outside 87. And all they're going to tell Decker, and they ran this play so many times last night in different forms, they're going to double that three up to Quay because. Quay is not going to come over and just absolutely warhammer this guy. And so not only can he double team him, but he can actually turn his shoulders, which is a cardinal sin for an offensive lineman, is to turn your shoulders to the sideline because he can play over the top now. He can push you back into the hole, all kinds of bad. But if you're not going to go ahead and hit this guy right under the chin strap right here and just bury him, well, this is a walk-in play. And you could do. they did it all night. They did it absolutely all night. So now we got 14-3. And people are talking about with AJ, what are we doing? What are we doing? And there's a little bit is like, AJ, there's a little bit of vision here, okay? And Aiden Hutchinson uh, makes Royce Newman here. Uh, he, Aiden Hutchinson is, is like the matrix right here in that 
like he just backs up and goes inside. I mean, that is an amazing move. I don't know if you guys can see. I'll try to put it in real, real time. This is absolutely ridiculous. Look at the look at the uh, left defensive end here. It makes him miss. But the route that AJ Dillon is taking is confusing. And again, we ran these like gap schemes all the time. And if everybody's coming down and we got a kick out block, you should be thinking I'm coming off of Musgrave's backside here. Okay, they've got everybody blocked. Everybody blocked, but he's so tight that he can't bounce this out. Okay. And he makes something out of this. In other words, this is a second seven run. He gets down. I think he gains four or five yards here. But there's this is the two sides of AJ Dillon. AJ finishes this forward. He finishes falling forward. He runs hard. But this run could have been so much more if you just see what's happening a little bit earlier. Stay lateral, bounce, and go. I just, for whatever reason, it's not clicking. Is he too close to the puller? Is that start stop just too much to ask for what, what they want? Does he need to start further away and get more momentum? There's so many ways to look at this, but bottom line, this is a positive play because he fights for it. So you run the ball twice. You finally run the ball. You run the ball twice. You get down to third and was that third and two? Okay. And they're running the, you know, the outside motion. Because they're going to throw the ball, of course. But when you run this motion outside and you don't extend both the up receiver and I think that's Musgrave or Kraft coming out, now what happens is you have the inside linebacker, the safety in the box, and the corner can play those two guys. In other words, you haven't created any horizontal spacing. So when you release this and you're releasing it, so maybe the tight end could do a little stick and go to the flat. Well, you already have outside leverage by the corner. The safety, if he wants to play it, if he's going to come upfield, can play that easy if that's a branch. And now you've got the linebacker and the corner. Somebody's getting doubled here. So what happens? Jordan Love looks down here, realizes that everybody is covered. People are not ready for the ball on the other side. They wanted to hit 13 there, or they wanted to hit uh, 88 down on the on the bottom of the screen. Both of those guys, are they covered enough to throw to or not? I'm not a quarterback, but they look covered. So he looks back. Does he have the anticip anticipation to throw the break out of Dobbs right now, or is that Jalen Reed? Nope. So he throws off his back foot. It's high, almost gets picked off. Now, this is so that we punt the ball away, and then they have this huge end around. And this is a rookie on rookie crime, okay? Laporta gets him. This is Van Ness. Fakes, goes in. Laporte, Van Ness takes out like four people here. It's a bad car accident. But, <laughs> I mean, this is like – we're lucky he didn't go to the house here. So now it's 17-3, and it's just like it's keep piling on. You hold him to a field goal. You got to feel about, good about that. So it's 17 to three and you're in this, you've decided to go under center play action pass. Now Musgrave is in that split flow position. So maybe we can, we could demonstrate that we think this is the split flow play, split flow play. Say that again, split flow play. But we haven't done anything to establish the run. We're down here. And so maybe, you know, I'm sure Matt's thinking like, Oh, or coach the floor is thinking like, Oh, well, you know, we'll show them. The under center. Now, the problem is the dig route by Watson, they're just reading your mail. They're sitting on it from the back. We just talked about the backside safety comes down and gets the crosser. Well, Ancelotti obviously makes the play here, but Watson's going to get murdered one way or the other. And this is what happens when the quarterback gets heated up, right? Everything's happening a little bit too fast. And the reason you run under center play action pass is you want to give your receivers time to make the, get those deeper routes. So now you're running a short dig route that they, they just jump immediately. Instead of getting to your second read, which is open, top of the screen, you throw it into traffic, they pick the ball off. Problems. Talked about the gaps already. 
So 47 and 7 have to account for the B and the C gap. 47's in the C gap. You got 25 outside overhang. Darnell Savage can fill up, 20, 26 can fill up from the back end, but someone's got that B gap. You got the defensive tackle in the A gap. Quay goes outside. You see McDuffie fills backside A, where is he supposed to? Quay goes outside, it's a walk in. It's a walk in touchdown. And again, that's not how they drew it up on paper. I promise you. You could sit here and tell me that Hollins is supposed to rip underneath. You could tell me that Hollins is supposed to rip underneath, but that is the easiest block that you're ever going to see on the goal line. Is a slip that's a slip, a guard tackle play side block where you get to double a relatively light defensive end in for number 47 Hollins up to Quay, and Quay's just gonna pop outside. This couldn't be easier. Not involved at all. And that's a problem. Yeah, he leads the team in tackles, but there's just some things like, and again, I don't know if it's him. I don't know if that's what he's being taught. I, you don't know. But that doesn't make any, any sense. Now, a lot of people looked at this play. We're talking about the read option that they decided to pull out here, trying to get a first down. Okay, on second and five. And... Well, what's the problem? Well, the problem is Romeo Dobbs misses Brian Branch, doesn't block him. So instead of reading the pitch guy, they should have an extra man here. Love's got to pitch the ball now because he's about to get smoked by Brian, Ricky Brian Branch because we missed the we missed the crack block. If you don't miss the crack block, you're good to go here. You're three on two. DeGuara, it's just happening too fast. You see what I mean? It's just happening too fast. They're just they're just playing at a different tempo. But you miss the crack box, the play's never going to work. Exact same scheme as they just showed on the goal line. So now Quay tries to get in there. He still gets walled off. All right, so they do the double team on the three technique up to Quay. Quay's like, I don't want it, any of that this time, except the problem is he's not playing into the gap. He's playing into the man. So all Decker has to do is keep his shoulders turned. He runs right into him. He's gone. He's away from the play. Now Rashawn Gary's got to figure out as he's pressing out the tight end, where's this guy going to go? And because of the speed, once he decides to go outside, Rashawn gives up the edge a little bit. He ends up making the play here, but it's, again, five yards down the line, down off the line of scrimmage. Bad ball. Reading mail again. Under center play action. 24-3. to three. Are you running under center play action was 24 to three? You got Luke Musgrave over here blocking the, the right defensive end. Even if Zach Tom doesn't get beat bad here, which, you know, as an offensive lineman, it's your responsibility to block the guy no matter what. He doesn't take a good set here. Hutchinson beats him badly. But, man, this is a tough one. They're like, hey, we're going to do an under center play action, and you're on your own against their best player. And it's going to take a while. And we're down there. You know, it, it's part of the job. Don't get me wrong. But it's almost like you'd rather have just call it a drop back. Because you're not fooling anybody right now. But you look at 95's got Luke Musgrave beat. He's going to, if, if Hutchinson doesn't get the sack, Musgrave, or 95's getting the sack. It just is what it is. Because you're down on, you're down on the goal line and you're asking your rookie tight end to block a guy, a, a, a Quara that's been in the league for years. That's just, that's a tough ask, man. It's a tough, this isn't that Georgia rookie. Okay. So they finally get a first down and you can just look, Dan's pissed. You can just tell he's just not, mm -hmm, not happy about it. Okay. They get a first down on penalty. We get, they get a uh, encroachment. And now we start talking about Aline McNeil, who was one of the guys we need to look at uh, when we talked about our, our preview. And what happens here, this, you know, sometimes Herb Street's on the, on the call here and Herb Street does a good job and everything, but I don't know how much he knows about offensive line play. And you're watching this immediately and you're trying to make snap deals, but this was a back block by Josh Myers gone wrong. And the reason that it goes wrong is because the tight, the tackle Zach Tom 
has to come down and put his body in the B gap to stop penetration. Because although I think Myers probably takes bad footwork here, it's very difficult for him to get back there and stop penetration on a penetrating defensive tackle if that right tackle doesn't come out and take, a, take away the B gap. So Zach just kind of steps and half hearts it, misses him with his hand. McNeil's in the background. Everybody thinks that Tucker Craft's trying to hit this guy. He's not. He's trying to get out of his way. He's actually trying to be the lead blocker is what actually is supposed to happen. He's supposed to block, I think, lead up on Ancelotti. This turns into a tackle for loss. When it rains, it pours, man. Things are going bad, okay? And now he's going to get a sack on this play. You think about your snap to release, though, from Jordan Love, and, and this is one of the problems. Foot's in the ground. He wants to throw, but where are you going to throw? Nobody's open. You can throw, what, one, two, three, quick, and as quick as you can, hit the swing route. I mean, they're just sitting on these routes because they really believe that they're going to get there with four in these games that they're running are working. And so they run a tee on the side with Hutchinson and, and McNeil. And he ends up making, getting a sack. He just, he just made all pro in two plays. Crazy. Good player though. Good player. But you know, it's, it's tough. It's a tough sport guys. You got a third and one look, okay? And Quay, Quay decides to shoot the gap, and this is just the rule of linebacking. If you shoot that gap, in other words, if you come underneath into the big gap to make this play, you better make the play, man. Like, you got to make this play because they have a lead blocker that's literally going, well, who should I block now? Because Quay went backside, but he runs into the tackle. Now this guy's out the gate. Third and one play, he picks up six. Tough. One thing you can bet on is Rashawn Gary's coming to play all day. I don't care what, what the score is. Kid's out there to play, man. That, uh, that young man's out there to play. He's an, an impressive human. Just about this life. Look at him. He's got that guy all kinds of beat up. I'm not picking on Quay Walker here. When you play middle linebacker, you're involved a ton of plays. Quay Quay's faking like he's going to blitz. I think early in this, he's 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 uh up at the line of scrimmage, so kind of an unfamiliar position. So now he is he's got flat, so he turns his shoulder pads instead of shuffling out. Why is that important? Because when you turn your shoulder shuffle pad or shoulder pads, you can't redirect the quick slant. So all they do here, hit the slant on St. Brown. Darnell Savage is going to come from across the field and try to take his head off. Nope. First down. It's tough. Like these little, it's like details matter more than you guys think, right? Or more than we all think. We all talk about, oh, I'm running this system versus this system. I got this athlete. He runs a 4-6. He benches 225, 30 times. Technique, assignments, and details. How you go about your business matters so much in this game. Now we talk about it's good if if Joe Barry wants to play this kind of defense, where we're just gonna let the defensive line win one on ones, take these matchups. Your linebackers, and again we've showed it: Atlanta, New Orleans, the Lions tape. Your linebackers have to hit the hole. And have to cause a you know a, a pileup. If you're going to sit back here and just take this block, you see seven, you know, arms at his side, not ready to strike, not attacking this. I think this is going to be a tight end taking it on the chest. That's a tough. It's just a. It's a very very tough way for a defense to play because you can fall off and make tackles eight yards after the line of scrimmage all day. So you get a tackle there. Eight yards down. So it, it's it's like it's one thing to – you have to be able to account for that as the defensive coordinator or linebackers coach. Like somebody's got to come in and say, if we're not going to try to create a pile at the line – if we're not going to cover up the gaps on, on or behind the line of scrimmage, then we got to play some kind of different defense. Because we're just being – this is a catcher's mitt defense right now. You're catching everything at the second level. It's too tough. Sport's too tough. So now they get back, 
I got one or two plays from the second. The game's over in the first half. Everyone can sit there. Oh, they made a comeback. Oh, good for you. Listen, Ben Johnson took his foot off the gas because they're trying to run out the clock because they're up 24 to three in, in, in the half. I got a couple clips of the second half. And, and listen, this is the difference, though. You start talking about how the details of how you're running the routes. I mean, this is a, this is a different scheme. But when you go under center play action, you go under center because you want to run deeper routes. So you got the clear out. And now you got Watson coming underneath. But you got space. They run the cover two. The middle linebacker's chasing down the middle. You got the space. He's catching this ball at like 24 yards, right? At the at the, the last one I showed, he broke it 10. He drifted to 14. And this is why you run play action. Because he gets he fakes it, gets back to the drop, and you're gone. Now you can run different variations. You can you you can make it quick. I understand all that. But when you're struggling as a quarterback, as an offense, it's like, let's go bread and butter and be the best at the basics of the sport. Let's just do that for a while until we get our, our feet wet. And then the last thing, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, good. I guess good for Green Bay for, for letting this one slide, but the clock goes to double zero. Clock goes to double zero. And apparently you can't review it. So... They get a free play to Jaden uh, to read, and you know, it's basically start setting up their scoring situations. But really, really tough game. Uh, a couple observations. I think the game plan on offense is just difficult to justify given the personnel they have. You, know, you got the quarterback in the pocket. I'm talking about the first, the second half. I listen. If you made halftime adjustments or they they took the foot off their gas or whatever you want to call it, I've been in these games before where you score like five touchdowns in a row. And all of a sudden, it's like, well, we're just going to run it out. We're running four minutes for the entire second half. Ben Johnson, I think, started playing football again about, you know, halfway through the fourth quarter. Quarterback's in the pocket. He's holding. He's got to look at the second, third read. Like, they, the Lions just had a better – the Lions had a better system than the Packers. And the Lions thought that they could get home with four, and they did. They could drop seven, get get Jordan Love to make his, a second or third read, and get home. And they just – they outplayed us, it, but given what we have, given the left side of the uh, of the line is out, given you have uh, you have young players at certain positions, particularly the tight end and the wide receiver position, and the quarterback position, you don't have a lot of like layered in cut routes early on in the game, like these these things. Just it's easy to look back and say it didn't make sense, but it didn't make sense, you know, and you can't establish. I don't. You cannot establish a run game if you come out and you just start passing the ball around the yard. It just doesn't work that way because you don't have that good of inline blockers. Like, in other words, there's only certain things you guys are good at right now anyways, especially with being depleted on the offensive line and Aaron Jones coming back for his first game in, in two weeks. There's only certain things you're good at. You got to start working them. You can't just go, oh, we passed it six times, didn't work. Let's, you know, let's, let's run the ball twice and then pass it again, you know, for another three and out. In Aylin McNeil, we talked about was just a problem running pass. I, I don't know if he's an up and coming player. I don't know if he just he's been really good the last couple of weeks. I need to study him more, but he looks really good on film for a defensive tackle. Uh, I think they have a good one there. The Packers' defensive philosophy. I, okay, I want to be very specific about this. The team is not soft. I love some of the guys on that team, and I got on. I'm, I'm showing you some stuff on Quay, not because I think I think Quay is going to be really good. He's just not doing some very obvious things right now on film, and it hasn't been fixed. Their defensive philosophy based on that, though, is soft. The players are not soft. The scheme is soft. And you cannot play against good offensive lines, dynamic offenses with good play callers, if you're going to sit back and catch on the second level. You can't do it. you got to be an attacking team. What kind of team do you want to be? You got a dog in Kenny Clark. You got a run stop and stud in Preston Smith. You got a, a absolute unit in Rashawn Gary. You got a lockdown in Jerry Alexander who didn't play last, last night. What kind of team do you want to be? You've given up 422 yards, split down the middle, 211 yards, and two out of the last three games. That is un – I've never even heard of that. You might as well be playing high school ball. These guys have pride. They have families. There's no way you're giving up that many yards. 
if you stunt in the game, if you're running all this, you got to fill gaps. You got to be on the attack. You got to be more aggressive. And I said this before a little bit, the tone of the game feels like if you were to embody what Dan Campbell, what you, th- I know Dan, but what everybody out there thinks of him, this team plays like Dan Campbell acts. And you got to start asking yourself if you're an owner, if you're a locker room guy, whatever. Isn't that exactly what the hell you would want? Like you can have a smart guy, but it, it, that that is all. Dan is a smart guy that is also also emotionally aware of how to get these guys playing at an extremely high level. Too many times, I don't know if I can say that about this organization in its current state. Mike Holmgren was that kind of guy, you know, 30 years ago. What did I get wrong? Well, I, I didn't get it wrong. I was help. I was hoping that the tackles would be unhealthy for the Lions. I thought Decker was going to play. If Decker didn't play, I thought Colby Solzer would play right tackle. And we had Rashawn Gary and Colby Solzer all night. And I felt a lot better about Preston against Penny Sewell on the left side than the right side. Um, but the game's different when you got those guys in there because they're a top offensive line unit. They've got all pro center. They've got two first round picks at tackle, right? They're very, very well coached by Hank Fraley. I mean, they are. Hank Fraley is one of the top offensive line coaches now in the National Football League. For years, he has been. They're technically sound. They have a, a great menu of different kinds of runs and play action passes. In other words, they can do everything. They're a good zone team. They're a good gap team. They're a good man team. They're a good pull team. They can run play action pass under center. They can run it out of pistol. They can run it out of gun. They can pull guys with a run pit. They have anything you want to run, they can run. That's why they're good. Every one of those, the backup, 60 yesterday was turning on, was turning uh, Kenny Clark. Can't believe it, but he did it, you know? Uh, the Packers did have opportunities. I think I talked about this uh, because of the way that Detroit was going to play, that we had opportunities with Luke Musgrave. Musgrave gets hurt. They didn't really run those kind of second, you know, different layer tiered in cut routes early in the game. Jordan was not, didn't good. He, he was just not in rhythm with his wide receivers. So that was a difficult area. But I think love is a sitting duck in that pocket, even with only four people rushing with the current iteration of that offensive line in drop back mode, when he has to go to his second and third read, Okay. And he's waiting for that second window too often. He's either thrown off his back foot and it goes high, or he's running for his life, or he's or, or he's getting sacked. You have to make this more obvious and easy early. You have to have more adjustments. I mean, this is what you're missing when you don't have Aaron Rodgers. More adjustments at the line of scrimmage. You know, for all the other stuff. And this is part of it. You're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. Newsflash, right? But this is what you're missing right now is like, I can turn a bad play into a good play or, or, or a manageable play. Right now, I don't think that we're capable of doing that at the level that needs to happen in the National Football League. So these are the things I got. I don't think I got – if you if we look at the, the first show, that we the preview show, I don't really – I think it was, it was one of the few shows that we were pretty spot on. What are the areas of opportunity for this team right now? And, I didn't write anything new from last week when we won the game. Offense, the running game has to improve. Now, the game plan was sabotaged more by penalties last week than this week, but you're averaging 3.3 yards per carry for the season. I think you averaged like 2.3 yards per carry in this game. Your running backs got 10 carries total. You didn't even, you know, you talk about establishing the run, but you're not establishing the run. You got guys making mental errors with hit, like hinge blocks. It's just it's Keystone Cops. Got to be better. Does Stenovich need to go back into that room? I don't know. They were a lot better when Stenovich was in that room. I think we can say that, and I know they're missing guys, but I think we can say that now without hurting anybody's feelings. That line was a lot better when Stenovich was in that room. Number two, you had Jamar Gibbs, you had Montgomery. Those guys are good running backs. Last week, we shut down the, the Saints running game, shut down their defense or their offense, but they're missing Jamal Williams and they're missing Alvin Kamara. 
So against good teams with good offenses, good O-lines, dynamic running backs, Jameer Gibbs can't average five yards a carry. He can't run an end around for 40 yards. Montgomery can't have three rushing touchdowns. We just saw from a scheme point and how we're attacking that scheme with our personnel, it has to be more violent. It has to be – there has to be a, a, a greater intensity. It has to be better. It has to be cleaner. And then the last thing is we have to manufacture points at all phases of the game. You saw we got a turnover to convert it to three. That three should be seven, but you got three. I mean, but if you get the ball on the 16-yard line, yeah, or whatever it was, you got to score a touchdown. You can't go three and out because you, you pass the ball three times. We muffed a punt. Special teams. Got to pick up your game. We got one of the best guys in the league out there returning kickoffs. He can't get past the 25-yard line. You see guys run into each other. Musgrave's looking at who to block on, on the on the on the kickoff. These things are not, I mean, we've every time this team loses, because this team could be one and three right now for being if you know we're just being real with everybody. They're a field goal, you know, bad field goals away from being one and three. And when this team loses, it's always the same stuff. It's not really that they ever got just out, out talented. Like they don't really, they, sometimes you get out talented. You know, somebody, Patrick Mahomes will out talent this team right now. But this team, you don't feel like you're going to get out talented by the Detroit Lions. You're getting out played, you're getting out coached, you're getting out schemed. That's where do we get that back? You get out cultured, which is a hell of a thing to say, but it feels that way. So. I got a couple of listener questions I'll hit. Number one thing, uh, uh, thank you for all, all of you who's kind words. I cannot play anymore. Look at me. I'm a, I'm a shadow of my former self. I would get as bad as you think it is now with me in the game. It would be that much worse. I would, I would get somebody killed. I actually quit football because I was afraid I was going to get somebody hurt because I couldn't play with my right, my right arm. Uh, how much of this is coaching? I, listen, anything you allow or you condone, right? You, you might as well be coaching that thing. So if your linebackers aren't filling, you're coaching that. You might, and you're allowing it, and you're coaching that thing. If you're not hinging on the backside, you're giving a hand check to a guy who's a penetrator, you're coaching that. You might as well just be coaching it, right? If you don't have good eye discipline, if if you're getting off your first read too fast, whatever, if you're not communicating well, if you're bad footwork, if you're allowing it, you might as well be coaching. If you're condoning it, you might as well be coaching. So there's always blame to go around when you're playing good or bad, right? There's always credit and blame to go around that's equal. But I'm such a big, I'm big on process. I'm big on the details. And when you keep saying this, you know, you keep seeing the same things pop up, it's it's a head scratcher. Uh, we talked about this a little bit. There are empty gaps on defense uh, sometimes, but not by design. But this is the thing that you got to give Joe Barry. Like it's not Joe Barry's fault. Like he didn't say, hey, Run two people through the C gap instead of one through the B gap. Like, that's not what's happening. They're just making mistakes. Why are they making mistakes? That's the better question. And explain why the offensive line for the Lions is so good. I know there's a couple more here, but real quickly, I talked about it. They got an all pro center. Uh, they got two really good tackles on the first round draft picks. The, Hank Fraley is a really good offensive line coach. When I would, Stenovich was in the offensive line, we had a really good offensive line. When James Campbell was in the offensive line, we had a really good offensive line. Larry Bechtel had a really good. The coaching in that position matters because you got like nine dudes on the team. Eight of them are going to dress. Seven of them or six of them are probably going to play. So five guys out of 11 are on the field all the time on the offense. It matters. You got to have a guy. I'm not saying that who, our Buck is, isn't our guy. I'm just telling you that Hank Fraley's really, really good, and that's a reason that that team is doing so well. So – I think that's all we got for today. I hope everybody enjoys the weekend. This is going to be uh, one of those weekends where you just got to go pick a team to root for or root against. I'm Mike Wall 68 on Twitter, process to perform on Instagram. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying these shows. Please subscribe and review. Hit that like button on the process to perform channel on YouTube. We'll talk to you soon.